Hey what's happening gamers, it is The Honest Gamer here and today I have a preview of the upcoming game from Capcom, Resident Evil 6. Originally due for release during November this year, the game has been pushed forward for a release date of October 2nd. The game genre is that of survival horror and a third person shooter, and the game will be released onto the Xbox 360, the Playstation 3 and the PC. The game will see you playing as Leon Kennedy, as well as Albert Wesker's son Jake Muller, and of course Chris Redfield, and all playable characters will have a teammate to fight alongside them, but more on that later. The story itself sees the world in a state of utter fear of bioterrorism attacks. The current president is ready to make an announcement to the world detailing the events of what happened during Raccoon City's destruction back in 1998. However, before he is able to do this, his venue becomes the scene of yet another bioterrorism attack and his close friend by his side, Leon Kennedy, is forced to watch his friend turn into a zombie and deal with that situation. Meanwhile in Europe, Albert Wesker's son, who is immune to the C-Virus, is fleeing authorities after a bioterrorism attack and soon teams up with Sherry Birkin. Lastly, whilst in China, Chris Redfield becomes the target of another attack, causing outbreaks of zombies. China will also be the stage where all of the game's protagonists end up and will be where the main bulk of the story is played out. During the title, Jake is attempting to flee from authorities who know that his blood contains a cure to the C-Virus, making him the most important man in the world. Meanwhile, Ada Wong, or at least someone who looks like her, is also tracking down Jake to use his blood for her own means. So with the story covered, let's take a look at the graphics. Now the engine is around 6 years old now, but is still pushing out some pretty damn decent visuals, which we have seen during the latest trailers, and also you'll be able to see some in-game action in a few screenshots in a minute. There's no doubt that high-end PCs will be able to further push these effects and textures, but the consoles already seem to have fantastic visuals. During the gameplay scenes of the trailer and the screenshots, we see that developers have taken shadow effects to some awesome levels during this title, and this can be seen on the deceased zombie's skin and also whilst your character is opening fire on the enemy. On to gameplay. During this title, obviously you will be playing from a third person perspective, and you will be able to walk, run and jump over obstacles with the help of your partner, as well as hide behind them for cover. Players will also be given the ability to dodge enemy attacks and also fall onto their back after sliding to shoot at your foes. Finally, you'll be able to walk and shoot, dual wield weapons and use plenty of melee combat. The main bulk of the melee combat will be performed by Jake, who can use his fists given that he is immune to the virus. Ok, so multiplayer details announced about the game reveal that you and your mate will be able to play co-op through the game with each other in split screen. You will also be able to play co-op online with people, having the ability to drop in and drop out of the game at any stage rather than during Resident Evil 5, where you had to get to checkpoints. Next up, let's dig into all the juicy details I could get my hands on. Well firstly, I've got some awesome new screenshots for you guys to drool over, starting with the ones most would have seen already. And as I show them, I will talk about what's new. So first up, zombies will now have the ability to jump and climb over obstacles to get them closer to you and make it harder for you to avoid them, helping to rise the tension. Details about pre-order bonuses have also been released, which I know you guys just love, and it's important to note that Mercenaries mode will be available from day one and not as downloadable content. So if you pre-order with Amazon, you will have access to a high seas fortress with both open and claustrophobic areas. A pre-order with GameStop will reward you with a creepy catacombs filled with traps and pitfalls. And finally, with Best Buy, you will get a multi-level railway map. Two more details to go. First up is that the starting mission when playing as Leon will involve him making his way through a dark and dreary university, and Capcom have revealed that this part of the game will be a throwback to the old style of Resident Evil horror. The final detail is that players don't have to just worry about axe and pipe wielding zombies anymore, but also a new creature called the Javo, which are those creepy things you see sprouting massive arms and stuff during the trailer. Oh, and you'll also be able to disarm enemies with well-placed shots and use their weapons against them. I'm assuming you'll do this if you run out of ammo, otherwise it doesn't really make sense. Ok, so now it's time for my honest summary. Really I think Catcom have moved too far away from what they started with, under the premise that fans will become bored with older, slower zombies and the horror they entail. Personally I believe Capcom thought that implementing constantly newer zombies who can move quickly and use weapons would become its own kind of horror. 
Take Resident Evil 5 for example. It didn't scare me in the slightest, but I still remember how badly the first Resident Evil got to me and the nightmares that followed. I think Capcom's main aim should always have been to find new ways to scare us with the older classic zombies rather than just creating new ones all the time. That being said, the graphics look great, the storyline actually seems kind of good, and the gameplay seems fine. I will be definitely keeping a close eye on the game, but it will not be one that I will be giving extensive coverage to when details become available guys. So let me know what your thoughts are on the game. Do you like these new kind of zombies? Let me know in the comments section below or on Twitter. Ok guys, for now that's all from me. For more honest previews and much more then be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter for behind the scenes action. And as always it is The Honest Gamer here, and happy gaming.